everything. All right, guys. So last video, I showed you how to fix this right here. And I was, I was thinking maybe everyone would be able to take that example and apply it. But it seems like quite a few people have been struggling and they're trying to get their page to start working again. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you basically uh, explain a little bit of how the Ajax works so that we can get our info to work again. Um, I kind of gutted out the jQuery, so just kind of follow along, but it should help you get going. Uh, there was, uh, I apologize if it's a little weird. I'm actually sitting on the floor because my desk broke while I was film, while I was live streaming me working on this. But uh, don't say I don't love you guys, and I, I took one for the team and continued on. All right, so let's go ahead and start from the top, and we'll explain the logic. We're going to be working completely in the JavaScript here. Um, I don't believe we use this anymore. So the way that I did that first get part, which is the right here, if it displays the free code camp is online or offline, is we changed it to an Ajax call. This is in the previous video, but we're just going to break it down. You set the type here. So we're changing that get JSON to an Ajax call. The type is like get, push, po uh, post, uh, delete. The URL, same thing. Then we have this new header column. Now you're going to have to get your client ID and uh, do that through the uh, Twitch developer form. If you don't know where it is or how to find it, the previous video we walk you through how to get that. Now what we're going to do is say on success, run a function on the data we get, which is essentially like our get JSON. Get JSON assumes you have a success. Ajax does not. And then in this case, we're saying if data.stream is null, they're offline. So we're just throwing our jQuery in here to change the status. Else, we're going to say that they are live because uh, the stream isn't null. So that's something we already know. Now, the next part that we're going to cover is how to get successful messages like so. So you'll see right here, we have a couple things going on. And not all of them are displaying. And that's cool. Uh, you'll see that we have a 404 not found here. Very cool. And uh, everything else in between. So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. So we're going to do the Ajax call again. And we're going to have a git. And then we're going to pass in. This is for the channels that Free Code Camp follows. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in the client ID. Now on this example, we're just going to pass in success one more time. Let's go ahead and clean up some of this blank space. And in here, we're just going to go ahead and throw our logic in here. We're going to set display name equal to everything else. We're basically just relocating this. This if logo is equal to null is when the logo isn't set. So we're just going to go ahead and pass in that. Basically, if this returns null, it means they don't have a logo. So we're going to set that. This is just reorganizing uh, where it was before. And we're going to have the follower info. And again, this should already be done in your to some degree in your code. And we're going to go ahead and just prepend that. And so we're going to pass in the logo, the display name, and the status into this HTML and append it. Now, that, that's it for Free Code Camp's followers. Now, to give an example of how you would do the de deleted followers. <laughs> excuse me. Is we have just the two examples that Free Code Camp gives us, Comster and 404, and we're just running a for loop that goes around the Ajax call, so that we get one URL each iteration. Now you'll see we it's Ajax, what type, a get call once again, the URL, and then we're just throwing the name on the end of the URL here, and then the header again is our client ID. And then instead of success, we're actually doing error. So this is where a lot of people are getting confused. They're trying to use the dot done function, and this isn't how it works. It's Ajax is slightly different. So you're going to be using error. When it runs an error, you're going to get a different response than when it's a success. And because we, you see, I don't even know write the success function here because we know it's going to be an error. Now what you can do if uh, you want to just make a simple one single get call or two get calls is you can combine these two. And then just instead of just doing this, we can create a a array with the the channel names that Free Code Camp is following, and then add those two to it as we did before, and then we can run that a for loop around that. But for simplicity, we didn't do that. So you'll see uh, we're gonna check for these two users right here, and we're running the error, and then it's the same thing. We're just outputting the change in our 
for data. We're prepending the same stuff, except it's slightly different because the API uh, that we're getting back is different. So in this case, the display name is just status.txt, not found. And then also data3.status, which uh, is, um, you know, 404. And then the logo, we go ahead and hard set that to one that's not there. And before you know it, everything's up and running. Life is good. And uh, you'll see 404 not found. It looks like uh, right here, this logo is not found. Now, we didn't set anything for the, uh, the status if it's null. So that's still displaying null. But you could do that fairly easily on your own. But uh, I hope this got you going. It's pretty straightforward. As long as you understand how Ajax works and the setup process. Um, I'm sorry I didn't go step by step and covering it over. Uh, fortunately, I, I, uh, I thought this might be easier actually so that you can take your code and go from there. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you all. We just hit 10,000. I'm very happy about that. Uh, don't forget to support me on Patreon. Uh, it goes a long way. It helps me out. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.